In the last Linux Literate, we learned how to create and manipulate files through the terminal. If you haven't seen it, there's a link up here. But in this video, we're going to learn a little bit more advanced stuff. We're going to talk about Linux plumbing. Let's get into it. The basic philosophy behind Linux is that you have simple programs that do one thing and do it well. And then you're able to string those programs together through plain text in order to achieve your end goal. So when I'm talking about plumbing, I'm talking about how to actually make simple terminal programs communicate with each other. So it's all well and good to talk about philosophy, but let's get into the nitty gritty. Let's start with our old friend LS. LS will list the files in a directory, but let's say that you don't care what files are in a directory. Let's say you wanna know how many files are actually in that directory. The first thing that we could do is LS, and then we could uh, use an, a greater than symbol and give a file name. So let's say list.txt. Now, there's no output anymore. Even though we ran the ls command, all of the output was directed into the list.txt file. So let's look at that. We can use cat and then list.txt. Cat will output the value of list.txt to the terminal. So instead of ls uh, having highlighted file names and uh, condensing the line breaks into multiple lines, uh, you can see that's the raw output of ls. Now we could hypothetically open up uh, get it, and we could open up the file list.txt, and we could use uh, our thing here to go, oh look, there's 19 files. We, you know, we have the line numbers here. But this is a command line tutorial. Uh, so instead of doing that, there's a simpler option. We can do wc for word count, and then dash l to count the lines, and then we could do list.txt. And there you go, you can see there's 19 files listed in list.txt. So now we know that the greater than symbol can be used to output all kinds of different uh, information from the terminal or terminal applications into a file. Uh, so we could do the same thing with uh, other commands. Um, basically, if it outputs text into the terminal, it can be output instead into a file. But you might think that's kind of a roundabout way of having applications communicate with each other, one writing uh, its output into a file and then another loading that information from the file into the application. And you're right, there's a much easier way to have applications communicate with each other. And the way we do that is with the broken bar or the pipe. Now, this symbol is usually uh, the shift backslash. Uh, it's usually above the return key on a US English keyboard. Uh, so what you would do is do something like ls, and then we could do the pipe symbol wc-l. And there you go, we have this basically the same output. We have 19 files in our directory. All right, that's really cool. But let's say that we have a directory with lots of files in it. And let's say that we want to find a, a file name or part of a file name uh, and see just how many results get returned there. Well, the way we would do that is ls, and uh, we can just pick any random directory that has a lot of uh, contents in it, ls, and then usr slash share. And you can see there's a lot of files in there. So what we can do is we can clear that. We can do ls user slash share, and we could pipe and say grep local. Uh, well, you might be wondering, what is the grep command? What does it do? Well, grep stands for global regular expression and print. And basically it lets you uh, take a string of text and search for uh, that string in any kind of input text. So you can say, so what we're doing is we're piping the results of ls into grep and searching through those results for the string local and it returns any amount of uh, match. And you can see here local is highlighted, which that's pretty cool. But you can also do something like ls user share and then grep and use the caret and then local and you'll find only those things that start with local. The, the caret is, stands for local. You could also do something like uh, a dollar sign at the end of local and only things that end with that string will show up. That's super handy. You can also do some, something like, uh, 
let's go back to our home directory here. We just, we don't need that anymore. We can do uh, dot m, uh, mkv dollar sign. And there we see only the dot mkv files in our directory. Grep is super handy and it's able to do regular expressions. So you can actually do really powerful things to search for patterns of text in your file system or in different files, basically anything that you could imagine. But this isn't a video about regular expressions that might come a little bit later. So now that I've armed you with a little bit of information, I wanna see if you can figure out how to uh, count the number of files that start with DO capital D, lowercase o, in your home directory. Uh, I want you to go ahead and pause the video and see if you can figure out how to count those files. Did you figure it out? The way I would do it is ls pipe grep caret do pipe wc dash l. And when you hit enter, you see there are two results. Now, yes, and yes, it's possible to pipe multiple uh, results down the chain. It's all parsed from left to right. So first the terminal will run ls and then pipe that result into grep and then grep will pipe its result into wc. It's super powerful. It's very, very awesome. And you can actually push the up and down keys to navigate through your history here. And you could remove this if you wanted to see what the results of the grep do is. Now, doing something like this in a graphical interface would actually, it's, it's a little bit more complicated than just these simple commands. So we're using ls a lot, uh, but there are many other terminal applications that will output information that you can parse with these other applications. For example, ps uh, will output all the processes that are running if you use the AUX operand. And you can see there are a lot of, uh, of processes that are running on our system. In fact, there's way too many to actually, for this to actually be super useful to us on its own. So what we could do is something like PS, AXU, pipe, grep, Firefox. And you can see here that we have multiple Firefox uh, instances running on our machine. And we could even go as far as to WC-L. And there you can see we have nine processes uh, with Firefox in the name of the application running. Uh, now you can see here, these these ones here are Firefox, the uh, web browser, but then down here we have the actual command that's being run, grep searching for Firefox. Uh, so <laughs> that, may, that might be eight copies of Firefox running in the background. So we've talked about cat. Cat will uh, load the contents and print the contents of a text file into your terminal. And here, there aren't that many files to uh, to be seen, but we could list the contents of user or usr share into list.txt. And uh, then if we cat list.txt, you can see it's well more than uh, the, the screen space will allow. There's a way around that. We could do cat list.txt and then pipe that into less and less will let you use the arrow keys or the page keys to uh, move up and down through the list. Less is a very handy tool for uh, if you're wanting to read the contents of a file. You can actually use less as well to list uh, and it works basically the same way. Now you would hit Q to quit less. You can also do something like PS AXU and then less and you can just at your leisure page through the files or the uh, the processes you have running. And again, you hit Q to quit less. So what we're gonna do now is create a list of files that uh, is sorted by file size. And that's done by using ls dash capital S. And we'll just use uh, slash bin because there's binary files in there and it's fine. So we'll pipe that out into list.txt, list, .txt, list uh, by size dot txt. You can see here if we uh, cat list by size, then you know this it's listed by size and uh, not alphabetically. And there's a lot of files in here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use the cat command. 
list by size, and then we're going to pipe, sort, and hit enter. And you can see now that it's sorted alphabetically. We could even do dash R for a reverse sort, or we could do dash capital R to randomize it. I think that's pretty cool. And since we have so many here, we could even pipe that into less. And now we have a, a list of random uh, file names from our bin directory. And uh, I don't know, it's pretty cool. So I hope that you're starting to see how truly powerful the command line is. I mean, if you take a moment to learn the more interesting aspects of the terminal, you start to realize that you can unlock the actual potential of your PC. It's no longer something to fear and becomes instead something that you can harness. Anyway, I hope that you enjoy the Linux Literate series. There's gonna be a playlist down below or maybe up here in the corner uh, where you can actually check out all of the different ways that I'm trying to help you guys learn Linux. Um, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. It really helps us out here on the channel. You can also subscribe to stay up to date with all the content that I'm producing here. Um, as always, I want to thank my patrons who make this possible. I mean, if it wasn't for them, I truly would not be able to do this. So I want to say thank you to them. Um, if you believe in the work that I do here and you want to help the show, consider helping the show out on Patreon, or you can become a channel sponsor or channel member here on YouTube. Uh, you can pick up a t-shirt. Uh, if that's more your speed, GNU slash Linux, that's a pretty cool design, I think. Uh, but no matter what you do, thanks for being here. I'll see you in the next one, and have a blessed day.